Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about finding tangents to a polar curve, say something like this for instance, which are parallel to the initial line theta equals zero. And to demonstrate this, I've got here the curve, which is a cardioid with equation r equals a times one plus cos theta. And what I'm going to show you is true for all polar curves. So when we're trying to find a tangent then that's parallel to this initial line, say on this curve, one such line is going to be this line here. Just mark it on, okay? So there'll be others on this curve as I'll show you as the problem develops. So how do we go about finding the coordinates of the point on the curve where we have this tangent that's parallel to the initial line? Well, what we do is we take any general point on the curve. But if we're looking, say, at this point here, remember that from the pole here out to here, this is going to be r, and it's going to make an angle theta with the initial line. Now, if we construct a triangle in here, a right angle triangle, something like this, and label this distance as y and this distance as x, then by trigonometry, y is going to be equal to r sine theta. And this is going to always be our starting point when working out questions like this, whatever the curve. Now if we were dealing with Cartesian axes, this being the x-axis and this being the y-axis, then finding the point on the curve where the tangent is parallel to the x-axis would mean differentiating, finding dy by dx and setting that gradient equal to zero. So to find dy by dx, what we do is we apply the chain rule. dy dx is the same as dy by d theta multiplied by d theta by dx. But we can change this to dy by d theta divided by dx by d theta. Now having a fraction like this, if dy dx equals zero, then the numerator of this fraction must be equal to zero. So what I'm saying then is that for points where the tangent is parallel to the initial line, dy by d theta must equal zero. So when it comes to finding this point here, it follows from here that y would be equal to r, and we just substitute our equation in here for r, which in this example is a times 1 plus cos theta, and then we multiply this by sine theta. And all we need to do now is find out what dy by d theta is and put it equal to zero. And that will enable us to establish the polar coordinates for this point here, which I'll call A. And we'll see if there's any other points on here where there are stationary points as well. Where in other words, the tangents are parallel to this initial line. So to differentiate this, We've therefore got dy by d theta. And I'm going to need to use the product rule. So I'm going to take a times 1 plus cos theta and multiply this then by the differential of sine theta, which is going to be cos theta. And then to this, I'm going to take the sine theta and multiply this by the differential of a times 1 plus cos theta. Well, a is a constant, so that's going to remain there. But if I differentiate the 1, that's 0. Differentiate cos theta, that's going to be minus sine theta. So we've got a times minus sine theta there. Now, cleaning this up, a is a common factor, so I can put that outside a big square bracket, and expanding this bracket here, cos theta times 1 plus cos theta, is going to give me cos theta plus cos squared theta. 
I've already got a out the front here, so for this second term I've just got minus sine squared theta. Okay, so just square that bracket off there. Now I'm going to put this all in terms of cosine theta. So sine squared theta, we know, should know, is the same as 1 minus cos squared theta. So if I've got a minus here, that's going to reduce down to minus 1 plus cos squared theta. So we'll just write that in. We've got a here. We've got these two terms, cos theta and plus cos squared theta. And then this is going to change through the identity that sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta to minus 1 plus cos squared theta. And tidying this up, we've got our a here and we've got 2 cos squared theta. 2 cos squared theta. We've got the plus cos theta. And then we've got minus 1. Now, we're going to be putting dy by d theta equal to 0 in a moment, but I can see that I'm going to need to factorize this bracket here. And it does factorize further. This quadratic in cos theta turns out to be two factors, where we've got 2 cos theta minus 1 here, and cos theta plus 1 in this bracket. So when dy by d theta equals 0. What we've got is either this factor would equal 0. That means that cos theta would equal 1 half. Okay. Or this other factor would equal 0. That would mean that cos theta would equal minus 1. Now from this, if we would take the inverse cos of both sides, we'd find that therefore theta equals plus or minus pi upon 3 radians. And for this one, if we inverse cos both sides, we'd find that therefore theta equals pi radians. Now how do these results relate to our diagram? At the moment I've only drawn one tangent parallel to the initial line. And I can see this must be when theta equals pi upon 3 radians. But there's going to be another one when theta equals minus pi upon 3 radians. And that will be down here. It will be symmetrically opposite A. So we'll just mark that one in. Just draw a line across there. And this point here we'll label as B. And apparently there's another one here where theta equals pi radians. And I can see that if we go round the curve, this is where theta equals 0. Round the curve here, this will be where theta equals pi upon 2 radians. Coming round here, this is where theta equals pi radians. So there's going to be a line that's parallel to the initial line at this point here, at the pole. Let's call this point C. I'm sure you could just read off easily what the polar coordinates are going to be at C, but we'll work that out in a moment. Let's just work with A and B at the moment. So what I'm going to do is we'll call this equation then 1, and we'll call this equation 2, and this one equation 3. So what I'm going to do is substitute equation 2 into equation 1. So in other words, cos theta equals a half. And if I put this into here, I get r equals a times 1 plus a half, 1 and a half a. Or in other words, r equals 3 over 2a. And so therefore, that means that the coordinates of a, the polar coordinates that is, r theta is going to be 3 over 2a, 3 over 2a, for r, and theta would be pi upon 3. And for b, well, r is going to be exactly the same, that is 3a over 2, but theta is going to be down here, turning in this sense, the clockwise sense, it's going to be minus pi upon 3 radians. And as for c, well, I can get 
the polar coordinates of C by substituting equation 3 into equation 1. That is cos theta equals minus 1. That's just going to give me 0 in the bracket, so R would equal 0. So we've got R equaling 0. And from this, therefore, the polar coordinates of C are going to be 0 and pi. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea then of how we go about this type of question in finding tangents then to any polar curve which are parallel to the initial line here. We set up this equation always for any curve, y equals r sine theta. We substitute then the polar equation of our curve for r into here. We find out what dy by d theta is and we set it equal to zero. And we solve the subsequent equations. And that will tell us then the polar coordinates of our stationary points.